This levee has an opening at the downstream side of the flatland. When the amount of water in the river increases due to heavy rain, the water flows through the opening and covers the fields. However, once the rain stops and the river's water level drops, the water in the fields flows back to the river naturally. On the other hand, if there were no openings, the swollen river can overflow the levee, in which the force of water may cause the levee to breach or wash away the houses. Furthermore, the fields stay flooded for a long period of time. This type of open-ended levee is called Kasumite. It was first designed by a historical figure of Japan, Takeda Shingen, a feudal lord, once ruled the area to the north of Mount Fuji. It is said that Shingen came up with the Kasumite method around 450 years ago as a way to mitigate flood damage in the fields. In Japan, when the water level of a river rises, it doesn't stay that way for a long period of time. I would say two full days at the most. During the typhoon season, many crops are planted here. Although this area may be flooded for about two days, the crops are safe after the water recedes. They continue to grow. In that sense, there is no major agricultural damage. In this region, the construction of Kasumite levees began over 40 years ago. Six levees were built over a period of 20 years. But why didn't they build a large, strong levee to save the fields in the first place? to this question can be found at a particular spot. Let's follow Sugio to the spot. You see, there's a railroad track here. This is the main train line in Miyazaki, built, I think, in 1927. So, it's a historical railway and overpass. The track and the levee are really close to each other. There are several ways to secure the flow of the river. One is to make the levee higher and allow more water to flow through the river. But, with the overpass, they could not go any higher. Then what other methods are there? Another way is to widen the river. According to Sugio, this method had also been considered. However, the mountains on either side of the river prevent them from securing enough space to widen the river. Furthermore, they had considered digging the bottom of the river to add more depth. However, the river flow brings a large amount of sediment from upstream. As the sediment would quickly accumulate, this method was not adopted. It would be hard for the people to live with peace of mind unless the water is let out somewhere. This is how the idea of the open-ended levee was adopted. Oh, here comes a train, the express. Oh, wow. Rather than building a bigger levee, people in this area chose a method to divert some of the water into the fields. However, these fields would be submerged in water during a flood. How do the local people feel about it? The Edda district is affected by the diverted water. 
we visited the Kurogi family home, which had been built on ancestral land passed down for 350 years. Hello, Mr. Kurogi. I'm Minori. Thank you for having us. How far is this place from the river? I would say 500 to 600 meters. And the water reaches this area? <laughs> it comes up to here. Here? Way up to here? That's right. Is that so? Well, it's nothing unusual. Kurogi kept a record of how high the water rose during past floods on a pillar near his home. Wow, and you recorded all this? That's right. It's amazing. All the way up there. Does it say 1997 at the very top? The one on top is 1997, 14.2 meters above sea level. The record is on the pillar. This is proof of how the people in this area have repeatedly experienced flooding. Are you glad that the open-ended levee was built? In my case, yes. Why is that? There is less damage. Less damage? What do you mean by that? Well, when we used to have a normal levee with no opening, the water came pouring in from upstream. From upstream. And now the water comes from downstream. So, of course, there's a difference in the amount of damage. You mean a big difference in the amount of water? No, not the amount of water, but the amount of force the water has. And also, with the old system, the water wouldn't drain. Based on Kurogi's experience, without the opening in the levee, water that tops the wall pours in with strong force, causing much damage. In addition, the flood water remains for a long period of time. We visited another person affected by the open levee. Kyoko Kai lives in the Kawazaka district. According to Kai, the flood water brings in unwanted things with it. The debris consists of trees and weeds. These unwanted objects can be found floating near the slope in front of the house and all around the fields. This requires some extra effort. I use a pole and push the debris away like this. I try to push it out as far as possible using the momentum of the receding water. There are, of course, advantages to having the open-ended levee, but I have to deal with it every time it floods. So in that sense, it's hard on us. I guess it can't be helped. The residents have mixed feelings about the open-ended levee. Sugio had also pointed out the debris problem. You see all the debris piled up over there? Yes. It all comes through here. So in that sense, if we had more trees growing over here, it would prevent the debris from flowing in. Look at that. There's so much piled up. This is an issue that the people in the region will need to resolve. Residents continue their fight against water. In recent years, homes have been elevated in an effort backed by the government. This helped decrease the number of homes damaged by flooding. The key is to not defy the force of nature. Miyazaki-ken, Kitagawa-machi-joku. 
画面中央を流れるのが北側です These are images of the flood in 2016 Towards the right are the Eda and Kawasaka districts The water flooded the fields and into the residential areas However, there was no levy breach This is the Kurogi home during the flood And this is how it looked the next day. The water had completely receded, even in the areas around the levee opening. Even schools that had closed during the flood resumed classes by the following day. Calmness returned to the area. By intentionally drawing water into the fields, we can prevent large floods and damage, so it's a sort of disaster reduction. This open ended levee plays a role of both disaster prevention and disaster reduction. Also, the river water and the diverted water in the fields are connected, so there are lots of living creatures that come and go between them. From an environmental perspective, this place is significant. In that sense, this open ended levee is an example of eco DRR, or ecosystem based disaster risk reduction. I think it is one of the most advanced water control methods in the world. The open ended levee is a traditional Japanese water control method that was invented 450 years ago. This is an idea that can serve to mitigate damage in various parts of the world, even today. Bonsai, an educational journey.